I don't watch wrestling anymore. <laughs> uh, like I'm done. I'm done. Like I'm not. I, I'm. I'm obviously not a fan of professional wrestling because I saw the greatest spectacle of the year last Sunday, and it made me not want to like professional wrestling anymore. The longest spectacle of the year. Oh my gosh! Well, I, apparently there have been Japanese events that were nine hours, so this is not the longest wrestling show in history. No, I think they're trying to pull that off, they're pulling the wool over your eyes. I think Wrestle Kingdom, Wrestle Kingdom comes close, but it, uh, the difference is that show is entertaining and the matches are good, all the way down the card, pretty much. <laughs> we weren't so lucky with this one. <sighs> Like it, I it, knew, and, and like like we knew, we knew yeah, going into this, yeah, it was going to yeah. be long. It was not not every match was going to be a winner, but even some of the matches we got that we thought might be okay were not okay. And and I understand there were some things that happened you couldn't really control. Um, you know, Rey Mysterio was hurt. Um, they went ahead and left the match on the card and did it anyway. Whatever, but still, like, what the hell was the show? Like who who was this for? Like who and, and the weird thing is there are people that when it was done, they're tweeting like, oh, this was the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I thought this no. was the greatest show ever. That no. that Shane versus Miz match was the greatest match I've ever seen. Nope. Yeah. Oh man, so, who's are you someone said that. <laughs> yes, there are yes. Huh. That's, 100% legit. There well, are people they, they with, are, There are that, people born with brain damage who They are entitled <laughs> to their opinion. However, that opinion is very 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 wrong. It's there all, was there was so much wrong with this show. There are so many from from the way it was laid out to the way that they put together some of these matches to the way that they presented them. I mean, at least Watching at home, we didn't have to deal with what the people live had to deal with, with like the giant spotlight shining in their eyes. Yeah, so watch a couple of the matches and some of that stuff. Imagine how much money you poured into those seats only to have just a, a huge, huge ass lights just in your face most of the night. Oh, and I, I always terrible. wonder about some of the people, like where you when you see the stage, you see the entryway, and then there are people that like sit like up here like behind it and over it yeah like how much did they actually pay for those seats and i'm is hoping it not worth it? yeah i'm hoping not a lot uh to me i feel like in a, a place of that size and how they have it laid out that if you're not sitting pretty close to the ring what's the point yeah well, you, you kind of wonder if anyone was sitting there and uh, had really bad seats they just pulled out their phone and just started watching it on the network. How dumb would that have been? You probably couldn't get signal with all the people. Yeah, true. True. But like, like I can, there are times I went and saw a professional basketball game. I saw the bulls one time. I won tickets off the radio. So it's like, okay, we'll go to the game. And when was this though? What what era? Like 98. All right, all right. So, so yeah, okay. it wasn't it wasn't the Jordan heyday, but they were still you know not terrible. Well, you must have called him like the year after he retired then. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the tickets we had though they were they were so high up we were above the scoreboard that hangs down in the middle of the arena, <laughs> and like seriously, when we stepped out to like you 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 get to the yeah. top of your platform and then you walk down to where your seat is, and it's like I was getting vertigo. Yeah, man. Walking down because that's it's almost... why they that's why they call it nosebleeds. Yeah, yeah, no, that's no joke. And I, I'm sitting there watching, like I'm gonna die. But <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, like, who would sit in these seats? These are so high up. But then once the game started and things were going, you know, eyesight is good enough in person that sitting up there watching, I could follow the ball, I could follow the game, I could yeah. recognize who was who. You know, I, I may not have been clear on all the numbers, but you can definitely tell like that guy's taller than that guy. That guy has lighter hair and darker hair. You can kind of pick people out, you know, because I mean, you've only got, um, you know, like what, 20 guys you got to pick from anyway. So it, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, at a wrestling show where you're in a football stadium, that is a much bigger area because at least like a, a, a basketball stadium is built a little more up because your, your court isn't as big. And if you watch, you know, there are people with paid seats that are like right on the line 
You know, yeah. they, they push them right up real close and they just kind of build up in a football stadium. It's like, you've got the field and then you've got all this dead area around it. And then you've got like a barricaded area and then you've got a row of seats and then you've got seats and seats. Yeah. So granted, you know, you put a wrestling ring, you can at least fill seats in the middle. But by the time you get up to those tall seats, like you're so far out, like, how do you even see anything? How do you make anything out? And especially if you're one of those people that has the pillar you know, one of those four pillars around the ring that's like right in the middle of your field of view. You're watching the two guys like you're doing this. Yeah, the whole I, match. I, dude, I, I just I guess most of it is just saying that you went like I, I feel like if mania was close enough and, and things worked out. Well, I, I say that, but <laughs> not after this year, <laughs> not after the last few, you know, I just I. Like, uh, imagine if you were going to, like, WrestleMania 17 or 18, where you're getting, like, Rock and, and Austin, or, you know, you're getting Rock and Hogan and uh, Stone Cold versus Scott Hall, which, I mean, right, well, he, you know, he, was, he was even pissed about that. But, uh, like, those cards were really stacked. But imagine just going now and just being like... Yeah, okay. I'm going to... And, um... and the problem is so much of... Well, I tell you what, let's let's start going through the cards and we'll, okay. we'll pull out yeah, some yeah. of these problems as we go because some of these problems are specific to some of these matches. So, um, all right. So anyway, you know, pre-show, kickoff. Uh, I think it was on Instagram. It was on YouTube. It was on the network. It was on USA. Yep. It was Facebook. Facebook Everywhere. video, I think Everywhere. Maybe, maybe Twitter video even. I'm not sure. So, um, yeah, so this was lots of places. So they had dead spots because they had to do commercial breaks. Yep. Um, they had all these, you know, uh, the, the uh, superstars, the legends coming in to talk um, and David Otunga. Um, <laughs> so how is he? Like, uh, I'm like, how is he still employed? I, I don't, I'm like, is he, he actually still employed or was he just there <clears> because he was available to make an appearance at the show? I think what he's under a deal because he's got that whole uh, lawyer thing that he does. I think he goes and does that for a little bit, and then he comes back, pops in for pre-show stuff. And I think they keep him around. It's just like, oh, he's good for PR and his. Well, uh, yeah, and I think because his wife is famous. Yeah, are they even still together? I remember at one point oh. they were. I don't. There, know. there was some sort of thing where, like, she was like, "He hit me" or something. I can't remember. Anyway, pre-show. This was like two. This was two hours worth, right? This was two hours. Uh, this was two hours, and it was four matches, I believe. Yeah, it was four matches. Yeah, two hours. Yeah, I just uh, I skimmed through that bad boy. Um, yeah, so I watched all of this live when we were there. So uh, the first match we got the Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nice for the uh, Cruiserweight Championship, and I actually like. I was should have, should have been on the main card. Should have been on the main card. This was a match that had a lot more history to it. They have been developing this yep. on 205 Live. Uh, this should have been on the main show. This was a great match. This yeah. was definitely, if you missed this match, if you just went in to watch Mania because you knew it was going to be super long, so you only went in at, at the, the regular show time, 7 Central, uh, 5 Eastern, whatever, uh, or 5... <laughs> Pacific, uh, any, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, four, four Pacific, whatever it was. When you when you went in, if you just started with the main show and you skipped the 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 pre show kickoff, go back and watch that match. Don't watch anything else on the pre show, but watch that match uh, because that match was really good. That was one of those matches when it got done. I was like, you know what? May maybe I was wrong about WrestleMania. Like this first match was excellent. This is a fantastic match. Maybe this will be all right. Derek, that's, actually, why they, that's why they put it on first. Yeah, they probably did. They probably did. Uh, and uh, the problem was that the, the arena was still half empty. Yep. People coming I, in. I, so I hate that. I hate that so much. I wish they uh, wouldn't do kickoff matches like that. Well, because uh, then, I, I mean, honestly, it makes... It, it adds to the effect that they want to make you think that like you shouldn't even care about this because like look oh well the people aren't even in here because they're not in here yet to watch this. It's they're like when they used to do, in. when they used to do dark matches before Raw mm -hmm. and SmackDown tapings. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd have two or three matches, and maybe one of those would end up on like heat or or uh, velocity or metal. Or or yeah, velocity. Or, 
was yeah, gonna say worldwide, but that was the WCW. Um, but yeah, they, they used to do matches like that, and it was like a half full arena, whatever, and it'd be kind of dark. They would turn off the lights so you couldn't really see how empty it was, and and that's why that's part of the reason why it was a dark match. And and so it's like it's those were fine. This was a good match that topped off a good feud on one of the better WWE shows, and they put it very first thing that nobody saw. Which is a shame because it compared is. to there, I, there were like what sixteen matches on the show or whatever, and yeah. compared to um, this was this was in the top three of the matches on the night. Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, All right, so, so many matches. So then we got the women's battle royal, which instead of being they were originally going to call it the Moolah, yeah. uh, and they got rid of Fabulous Moolah because they found out she was pimping some of the girls on the road. So, well, I think they were already very aware of that. It was just a thing. It, it came out. Like people, well, yeah, the out. public knew of it, and they're like, "Hey, uh, Snickers, uh, KFC, you guys pull your stuff." And I guess they got cold feet about it. Who? Uh, I'll, I'll post this question to you then. Who would? Uh... Well, actually, they did. They did name it after someone. It was the Manami Toyota Memorial Battle Royal. <laughs> what? So, yeah, M- Manami Toyota. A uh, retired professional wrestler known for her work in all Japan women's pro wrestling. That's strange. Was she ever in? Was she ever under the WWF E umbrella at all? I don't think so. I think this is part of WWE's attempt to like, like be the all of professional wrestling. Like the way, like they've started when we saw the um, AJ Orton stuff, they were mentioning TNA Impact. Like they acknowledged it exists. They're getting they scared. Well, they, well, they used to not scared. do that, right? Yeah. I don't think it's because they're scared. I think it's because they're trying to say we are all of professional wrestling. So we'll mention these things because they all feed into our history and build us up. No, they are sports entertainment. You, you, let me correct. Well, yeah, you all that. of sports entertainment and build us up, right? <laughs> So all Japan pro sports entertainment. Hmm. Um, let's see. I'm, that's, I'm, a, that's an odd choice. I was thinking. Uh, actually, I don't, let's let's just name it after like Wendy Richter or something. Uh, well, nobody really liked Wendy Richter either, but hmm. um, she was in the WWWA, but okay. not F. But huh. yeah, um, she did some appearances in the U.S. with Chikara about nine or ten years ago okay um she made some appearances at the king of trios uh but she apparently just retired she's like 48 years old just retired damn not too long ago so they they named it after her so so yeah so it was the men manami toyota memorial memorial about they said memorial she's not dead yeah um, <laughs> uh honoring her anyway um so basically what they did was they had Carmella um, got thrown out of the ring. And so she just hid underneath the apron. They let the entire match play out until just Sarah Logan was left. And then Carmella comes up behind her, attacks her, throws her out. Carmella wins. Yeah, see, I I didn't watch this battle royal because I thought it would be ultimately just pointless. I mean, it they, turns out I was right. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty terrible. But to give them credit, they let Asuka do a lot in the match, even though you know she didn't win or whatever. She did a lot in the match. They also had uh, Ember Moon returned, um, and they gave her a lot in the match as well. So you can tell she's going to get a pretty big push uh, when they come forward. So I mean, that um, top rope stunner is awesome. And and I got to say, Chinese Pirate was there from NXT, so she did the elbow. I was happy. So I yeah, was like, I, I expect her to be called up to the main roster pretty soon, honestly, because yeah. that, that elbow... kind of, well, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't want her to move up to the main roster because it'll... yeah, you get scared about it, don't you? Yeah, it'll you, just ruin her. Career. Yeah, you, you find like the good in XT and you're just like, I hope they don't get called up, honestly, because they're just Vince is going to ruin them. But here is the thing. It was it was a battle royal. It was a women's battle royal. Um, yeah. A lot of it was not great. Um, and that's not to take away, that's not to say it's because they were women. Just you get that a lot of times in battle royals because there's so many people in there and people have to move to make space for other people to do their spots. And yeah, no, I mean, uh, I was uh, say, same, the same thing, thing happens happened. with the men because right. you got Jinder Mahal and like Mojo Raleigh and people like that. So right. yeah, that's that's not a, it's just women. It's like, no, there's plenty of terrible 
dudes right. in and the, then, their um, battle royal as well. Major League Wrestling had their show, and their show is called the Battle Riot. And it's basically a battle royal. But instead of using the word battle royal, they call it a battle riot. But they did the same thing. They had a big match, lots of guys. It was a gimmick match for a big, you know, main event because they were doing a show, uh, you know, in New York. Um, but it, it had some of the same problems where there were times where there were just too many guys in there. And, and it's like you could see that they would walk over and throw a punch on somebody and the person is not reacting because the person doesn't realize they're getting punched. Yeah, there's just too much going and, on. And they kind of lean forward and they're like, I need you to move, you know, and then they move somebody yeah. out of the way. <laughs> So, I, you know, it, it it was what it was, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's whatever. And the ending, it was it was kind of lame. They do that a lot in battle royals nowadays. So you're just kind of like, well, that's kind of overdone, but whatever. Who cares? Yep. Yep. We'll move on. So then we got the revival versus Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins for the Raw God. tag titles. And I, this, I knew this was going to happen too. I yeah, knew so they it. Strip the belts from the revival. Um, Kurt Hawkins, his losing streak of 269 and O is finally over. Um, so he has the titles. The match again, it wasn't anything special, it wasn't right. great. It very easily could have been a raw TV match, yep. it was just there to fill time, and, and it's fine for the kickoff show. It's just there to fill time, it's just a mediocre match, just to have a thing. They did a fun little hey, Kurt Hawkins streak is over, and whatever, and you move on. So no yeah, I uh, wonder if the revival will ask for their release again. I would. Maybe they'll be granted this time. Who knows? Yeah. Then we had the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, and this again terrible. Lots of bad spots. the The whole thing was the two guys from Saturday Night Live came out and they did the exact same thing that happened with Carmella. They were they went under the bottom rope. They were outside the ring. They hid. They waited until the match was almost completely over. Um, you had, uh, I think it was the Hardys were trying to get Braun Strowman out. And so they ran in to try to lift Braun Strowman over. And of course, uh, it failed. So Strowman dumped the Hardys and then attacked the two guys from Saturday Night Live. Uh, the the one, uh, one guy like, climbed outside like he was he was like hey i'll just eliminate myself it's cool i'm gonna let myself out of here and so braun Strowman went over and grabbed him and gave him a punch just to make sure he get hit the other guy brought in his therapist uh like to deal with braun Strowman's anger management issues and as soon as you saw this guy get in the ring you're like that's not a therapist that's obviously a jacked up indie worker in a bad fitting suit um so you know he's taking a bump and of course he did mm. um and so then the other dude from Saturday Night Live got attacked and got thrown out, and then Braun Strowman won. Uh, how I don't. How can anyone look at that and be like, "Yes, I am thoroughly sports entertained." <laughs> um, people who are fans of those two guys on Saturday Night Live who wanted to watch a free show on USA where those guys would make an appearance in front of all those live people probably got done with that match and said, you guys were hilarious. That was great. I mean, I just imagine like if I was a kid, if I went back and watched it, I would be like, this is terrible. Cause yeah. even as a kid back then, when I was watching it, I would see certain things like, uh, when Papa Shango put the curse on ultimate warrior and he was throwing up, I was like, yeah, this is kind of bad. Yeah. And I was like eight or nine at the time. I mean, it's. I, I understand why they do it because they want to have crossover with mainstream. But at the same time, this is this is a horrible way to do it, especially when you have people that don't have any athletic ability. It's one thing, you know. And, and I'll I'll say this a million times: when Jeremy Piven was a guest host on Raw, he got involved in a match. Uh, same with um, uh, Stephen Armel from Arrow. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, his name is that. Yeah. Ar Armel? Yeah. Armel? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, they were both athletic. They got involved. They were able to do flips and jumps. They were able to, to do stuff in the ring. And you were able to go, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. I didn't expect that from those guys. But when you have people who are just actors, who don't have an athletic ability, who, who, like, I don't even know if they trained really to take a punch. Like, like they, when uh, the one guy was on the apron and he got hit, it's like they just told him fall on your side and then roll off the edge because he didn't, he didn't really bump. He just kind of fell and crumbled. Yeah. Um, so 
uh, again, this is if you want to do something with them in the show, you can do something with them in the show, and it's a wrestling show. So you can do a backstage thing where they get thrown into a pile of boxes. You can have them um, go through a table at catering. You can do something with them, but putting them in the match when they have no athletic ability is is just terrible. And it, you know, and it, I, honestly, what they should have done is what I said that I thought they were going to do last week. Have the thing where somehow they get Braun eliminated. He spent he's chasing them through the arena right, the rest right. of the show because yeah. at least then it sets you up to play more to their strengths and and do like different things. Even well, though it yeah, would be dumb, and it, and but it, it would. Well, and it, it that gives you the ability. You have all those people backstage that you want to make appearances. You want to have. Yeah. Ron Simmons say the damn. You want to have uh, um, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash. You want to have them make an appearance. Um, you know, you want to have all these people do different things backstage. So that gives you the ability to work them in in these little vignettes as the storyline flows through. And then when you do something crazy like the whole Miz and Shane thing, like you can have the two things like intersect in the middle of that match. You know, when they're doing something dumb, like, you know, Miz's dad is getting involved in whatever, and then outruns Braun Strowman and those two guys that, like, run through the middle of the ring while you're doing this stupid little comedy spot with Miz's dad, uh, you know, just to, like, throw everything off because it's a point in the match that doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, you can overlap with with this other thing going on and do, do a bunch of more of these exactly. things backstage, you know. Yeah. But instead of doing that, they did this. So, um. Uh, let's see. Delvis in the chat room says, I feel really bad for the superstars who have all that talent in the world, but get looked over for this hokey crap. And that's, yeah, I agree. Yeah. There were, there were some very like Andrade being in that match. It's yeah. Like, it's a shame. Like, nothing for him. I, they, they, like I said before, they should have saved, uh, like the four way or in the triple threats and all that stuff for the U S title, put Andrade in there with Joe and Mysterio, especially with Mysterio being hurt. Yeah. Then at least, you know, you, you can kind of keep him out, but someone's still there and it's fresh interaction and whatnot. And it would have been an awesome match. All right. So then we got um, the main show started. Alexa Bliss came out. She said, everybody gets a WrestleMania moment. I'm going to create a WrestleMania moment right here. Hulk Hogan came out. Everybody loved it. I turned to my friend. And I was like, ha, I wonder if he's going to say Pontiac Silverdome. And then he did. He made the Silverdome yeah. joke. But then yeah. instead of saying the MetLife Stadium, he said MetLife, uh, MetLife uh, Arena. Yeah. Which is a different place. Yeah. He which still again, messed it up. Well, but the question is, did he mess it up or was that was that intentional on his part? Like, is that I don't know. It's like, I kind of felt like people didn't really care, though, when he came out. Like, it, it, the pop for it was sort of mild. I feel uh, like he... I don't know. I feel like after that thing from a few years ago and they cast yeah, him out for I don't a think, while... I don't no? think so. I, no, I think, I think for the most part, people were like... They were happy to see Hogan, but they knew he wasn't going to do anything. You know what I mean? It's like... A few years ago, they did the thing where it was Stone Cold and Rock and Hogan, and they all come. They came out on the stage. They joked with each other and said some stuff, and then they left. And you were just like, okay, well, what was the point of that? I think right. that's what people kind of felt with this thing with Hogan. They were like, yay, it's Hogan, but who cares? It's not. We, yeah. We've got five and a half hours of this thing to get through. You know? Right. Um, so then, apparently, apparently backstage, uh, during, I guess, like the men's main event, or the men's battle royal, the Andre the Giant battle royal thing was going on. Um, Lesnar and Rollins were having this conversation with Vince saying, hey, we should go on first and do our match first thing. Because originally that match was supposed to be pre-main event. And they said, don't put us all the way at the end. Let us go out first and we'll get the crowd hyped up and, and we'll make everything exciting. And Vince said, sure, go for it. So that match like, you know, 20 minutes before, half hour before they're supposed to go out, it gets moved to being the first thing. Apparently, they didn't tell Hogan and Alexa Bliss. So <laughs> Hogan and Alexa Bliss are out there doing their little thing, and they're posing, and they're making fun, and whatever. And Paul and Heyman just... Out comes Paul Heyman, <laughs> who walks right past them and yeah. into the ring, and Which, you see uh, Hogan... Yeah, that was a funny visual of him just, like, strutting down in the ring, all pissed off to Hogan's theme playing. And you can tell that, that I, I was like, wow, Hogan sold that really well. He actually looked surprised. And then you find out later he was surprised. He had no <laughs> idea that was happening. Um, so that was kind of funny. So anyway, they said, um, you know, 
Brock Lesnar, he knows he's not appreciated. He wants to get the heck out of here. He wants to go to Las Vegas where he will be appreciated because, of course, he has a UFC fight that's going to be coming up in a month or whatever. Um, and so uh, he said he wanted to just do the match now, get it over with, and get on the plane and get the hell out of this place because it, it stinks and whatever. Um, so they had Jerry Lawler come out to do ringside commentary. Um, they had the two guys come out. And then before the match starts, Brock Lesnar just starts beating the crap out of Seth. And big move and big move and big move and big yeah, move. Yeah, he his back looked nasty. Oh yeah, he went he went through what like the German announce table. Yeah, like, I he guess tossed he... them in, and it's like the the whatever the announcer that was sitting there didn't move in time, so it's like he hit yeah. him right in the chest. Yeah, um, uh, his back looked pretty bad. Yeah, and like... he had he had that big swollen lump like yeah. up here. It's <laughs> like oh my god. Um. So anyway, they they eventually actually start the match. And then Seth Rollins like distracts the referee, or the referee took a bump. Yeah, they, they sort of like bump into him a little bit. And, and then, then like, uh, so he used the opportunity to hit a low blow on Brock, and then he's uh, able to hit like three curb stomps, and then beats him for the title. So the actual match was only like two and a half minutes, um, as far as I was. I, I, yeah, you know, I was I was okay with this. I was I was honestly glad to just get it out of the way. Honestly, because I, I you, you know how Brock Lesnar matches are, how they work by this point, and it's honestly a little tiresome. So, yeah, so I mean, it's 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 kind of like when he had the the match with Goldberg that yeah. only went a couple minutes. The difference is though, the short match with Goldberg was the main event that you were waiting all night to see, and then it was super short, and you're like, what the hell? This yeah. being an earlier match, you knew was coming earlier in the night. They did it as a surprise first thing out of the gate. It was actually like, oh. Okay, so it's like we had the great Buddy Murphy match. Then we had the, the rest of the garbage on the uh, kickoff show. And then we had this match, which, like, it wasn't anything, you know, super fantastic. It was not a great match, right. but it was interesting. So you're like, okay, well, at least that was fun, something exciting to have. And the belt is finally off of Lesnar. And the belt maybe, we can, may, maybe we can move past that and give that, that belt some credibility because uh, there's nothing left. Um, oh, my mistake. Jerry Lawler then came out after the match, not before. Uh, uh, so he came out for the AJ Styles Randy Orton match. Um, this is the one. This is one of those matches where the spotlights were shining out in the crowd, and people couldn't actually see the match yeah. about uh, three fourths of the way through. Uh, and this was a match. I, I talked about this last week when we did the show that this was a match that could go either way. It could be really good, or it could be really slow. It depends on what Randy Orton we got, and we got the slow Randy Orton. I, I I felt like this is a match that just never caught its groove. I, I, I it totally just agree. Plotted yeah. on and on and on, and you know AJ at least tried to be energetic. You could tell like he was trying to 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 kick it up a gear and to get Orton going, but Orton just he didn't he just didn't care. He just didn't didn't go for it. So um um yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to. I like. I'm just looking to see. Like, I, I did. I did uh, a Facebook thread on the official Pop Culture Network group. Yeah, for I saw that. Um, and so I, I'm just trying to see if there's anything else. But yeah, yeah, I was tempted to like click on it and say some stuff, but I wasn't watching the show live as it was happening. I had to like watch a part of it and then like do fans of power and mm. then wait a little bit and then pick back up where I was. So I was like, I don't. I didn't want to spoil anything. Yeah. All right, they did a Lacey Evans appearance because they can. They did the SmackDown tag titles, uh, Usos, Rusev, and Nakamura, Ricochet, Aleister Black, Sheamus, and Cesario. Uh, okay. They came in, and uh, actually, this was another one of the matches I thought was really good. Yeah. I didn't expect a whole lot out of this match because we've seen this match like 10,000 times, these, these combinations on SmackDown. You're just kind of tired of it, and you're like, whatever. But I thought the bar actually did an excellent job in this match. Like this was the one time where the bar came out and they were like, okay, now we're motivated. Like, even though they didn't win um, for whatever reason, maybe it's because they were given free reign, maybe because it wasn't on SmackDown. They weren't told you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. They were told just go out there and do whatever you want. And so they were able to just, to just perform. Yep. 
Um, uh, the, the best spot is when Sheamus keeps finding the guys and he's clubbing them. Meanwhile, Cesaro is still just spinning, spinning ricochet. The yeah. yeah, that went on for a while. I'm like, could you imagine just being spun around that much? Because I, I noticed Ricochet like was like this. So I imagine that that helps to have your eyes closed and covered. You can feel it, but you're not like, right. You're not looking. Uh, but for Cesaro to do it that long and to still just like not fall over maybe wobble a little bit, but to not fall over from is very impressive. Yeah. So um, again, it, it, it was, it was better than I expected. So I felt I, I, I raised it a little bit higher in my ratings. Again, it might be like the fourth best match of the night, but it was definitely one of the good ones. Yeah. When I'm talking about the matches of the night, this tag match was one of the good ones. It was really good. It was a lot of fun. Um, this one was entertaining. Um, I was really happy with this one. Uh, we got the Hall of Fame thing. Um, we had everybody showing off their rings. We had uh, Bret Hart was out there. Yeah. Even, even though uh, he God. had been attacked the night before. And oh my gosh, if you want to find out, if, if, if you want to know who are the people that have a hard time in, in 2019 separating fiction from reality, Find all the people who Hall of Fame. That was a work. That was obviously a work. That's leading to something. That guy's an MMA fighter. They're bringing him on for the show. That, that's going to have something to do. Vince wanted him to come in and attack Brett because he hates Brett and he wanted Brett to take a hit. Um, like all these people with all these dumb conspiracy theories and all these different things they were trying. It was like, uh, no. yeah. I, well, first of all, like if, if it was a work and this is an MMA fighter coming in. Why the hell is he wearing like a Rasta hat? <laughs> and why, why would they, if they were going to have a guy do a run in, why an MMA fighter and not a wrestler, why at the hall of fame and not at the show and why Bret Hart of all people? Yeah. The guy who has survived cancer and a stroke. And he's Multiple strokes. yeah. 61 years old. I heard his, his hip was hurting quite a bit. Though, yeah. So after apparently that. after the show, uh, after the Hall of Fame, he was taken to the hospital and they looked into his hip, but he was fine, whatever. He came back to appear uh, at WrestleMania. So, uh, uh, so it was, that, it wasn't that, that dude got everything he deserved but, from getting so, like punched in Dash, the face. Dash Wilder. So apparently, so they he all nailed him. They all get on top. They, they're fighting with the guy. They struggle with him. If you were watching this on the network, he hits Brett and then the screen goes black. Yeah, and then and it, it comes doesn't to the come crowd. back until you know they do the crowd shots and the people in the ring, whatever. But people leaked the footage. There were people that were filming it, and I think somebody actually had a tap on the satellite feed because I think the actual satellite feed of it got out at one point. Um, but they 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 you know, you see you see arms coming down, you see, I think it was like Harry Smith was like pounding on him, and uh, you know, a couple guys were just you know kicking him in the face. Whatever. Yeah, I think uh Ronda Rousey's husband even jumped in there. Yeah, he jumped in there too. Up. So they pull him out, you know, they're they're holding his arms back, they're they're taking him along, and you see Dash Wilder walks up and just goes bam and knocks him out. Just you know, the guys <laughs> completely goes away, and that was it. It was uh, good. So you deserved it, buddy. Yeah, so remember, folks, don't don't jump the barriers at wrestling shows. It's uh, always a bad idea. Yeah, because that's even. I'll tell you what that even that happens sometimes at local shows. If you're at a local indie show and you try to jump in the ring or take a swing at a guy, um, it's going down. Uh, there's a lot of pent up aggression and a lot of indie wrestlers, and you're going to find it. Um. So anyway, yeah. So they did the thing. DX, of course, came out. They got a big. Uh, announcement for hall of fame played the music and they were all running around on the stage and playing around with everybody Throwing the glow sticks and glow all that and stupid yeah. stuff yeah so so maybe that means dx is officially gone like it's over now they can never oh, oh dirt come on <laughs> all right uh we had miz versus shane mcmahon in the falls count anywhere this was your match of the night i know it was. oh my gosh okay so for the longest time all they did was brawl in the ring and around the ring. And I'm sitting there watching this going, why the heck is this falls count anywhere? They're not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, this is dumb. So eventually, though, um, Miz gets knocked out. Miz's dad, or Miz, and Miz is sitting on the announce table, I guess. And Shane gets up on the top yeah. turnbuckle to do the dive. <laughs> Shane's, or, uh, Miz's dad, you know, 
stops, get in the way. So Shane gets down, calls him into the ring. The two of them get in the ring, and his dad does this like horrible, yeah. like oh, or old man boxing pose. And Shane yeah. like corrects his hands, and oh, it was awful. It was it was pretty bad. Uh, and so I'm watching like they they have this shot where it's like Miz's dad, and you see Shane standing across from him. I'm like, this is the worst Mortal Kombat 11 ad I have ever seen. Did, uh, well, did uh, well, this was a SmackDown match. Uh, did Tom is it Tom Phillips or Todd Phillips? Oh, to do the announcing, the, the uh, yeah, uh, w- w- was he like, What a moment! I wasn't paying attention. What a WrestleMania moment, yeah, probably. I don't know. Like at this point, I was starting to get kind of upset with the show. Mrs. Um, dad is just so goofy looking. I he he looks. He looks there was like who was the pitcher for like the Phillies in like the late seventies, early eighties? Had the the mustache and the mullet. Um and, and I like of course I don't watch baseball, but like he did uh, like he was in commercials and stuff. That's the only reason why I, I you know know this guy. But he looks like he looks like a major league pitcher from like the late seventies, early eighties. Like he, there's something about Mrs. Dad. He looks like a guy on like the low and brow beer commercial. You know, he's like yeah. he's like the guy in the bar going tastes great when someone else is yelling less filling. You know, there's something about it. he like he hit he hit a time period in like 1978, 1979. And he said, you know what? I'm never changing my look from here on out. Uh, you know, I it, to be fair, we have a lot of that here. There are a lot of women that have not realized that it is no longer 1983. They still have the big hair, the, the hairspray. It's crunchy. Like, if you went to punch it, you'd probably break your hand. Really? Yeah. Wow. As, acid wash jeans. So now, like, now that those styles are kind of, like, sort of working their way back in. I guess they're, they're, they're back in, right? So they can keep that going another 20, 30 years. I guess. It's weird how people just get, like, settled into a look and just maintain it for, like, the next rest of their life. You know, I and it, part of it I understand. You get to a certain age, and you just don't care. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's whatever. I'm just wearing what I'm wearing, and and you don't buy new clothes because you don't want to, you know, put money into it because it's like who cares, <laughs> you know, yeah. whatever. But then at the same time, like he's grooming that mustache. Like you know, he's he's trimming it to make it that that nice little handlebar, you know, and he's I, feathering out the sides to make I, it. I, I think you should do that. Grow, uh, grow, grow a handlebar. Let let this feather out. It'd be it'd be great. How about no? Denied. All right, moving on. Um, just no. Uh, so then what happened? Oh, so then they finally leave and they fight through like the international announcing area and the guy from like the <laughs> stand. Uh, yeah, that, that entire all those tables just fell over. You could see <laughs> Charles Robinson trying to like hold the tables up and it all just fell over. Uh, and so then they they get to this one point where there's a giant sign that says like concessions and restrooms, and they're just brawling in front of the restroom <laughs> side. And you can tell like the camera guy is like, move to concessions. Move to concessions, but they're just fighting in front of the restrooms until finally they move over. And then they had like a, a golf cart behind the stairway. I did and like that bump. Shane gets thrown over and he hits the roof of the golf cart and then hits the ground because they don't want him to drop 10 feet, but he'll drop eight feet because that's yeah. a lot safer. Yeah. Um, it, so it looked still, pretty cool. That was still kind of a bad bump. Um, but then uh they they did the uh WrestleMania 17 thing with Triple H and Undertaker where they climbed yep. up on the scaffolding of the camera. And of course, it's like there's a scaffolding and a camera and then a lower scaffolding and a camera and then an extra scaffolding just sitting there for no reason. It's like, hmm, I wonder why that extra piece of scaffolding is there. Oh, because they're going to climb up and brawl. Oh, what's right that? There. A big, huge mat? And then, oh. Yeah, and then there's like this big crash pad with like a thin layer of cardboard to make it look flat. Uh, and like three strips of cardboard and then like black, it's like spray painted black and it's sitting on a black curtain. So you're like, oh, okay, well, I know where they're going. And it's funny because the cameraman in the scaffold right next to them, he kept trying to turn to to film what was happening like right next to him and the camera wouldn't go. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was, it was like hidden or there was a piece of wire that like wouldn't turn far enough, but it's like he kept, you see him, he keeps trying to, film like to be a camera like two feet away from what's happening and he just can't get it to go so eventually the guy on the top scaffold gets the shot looking down so that they can do the tumble off the side of the scaffold and apparently for the people who are there live 
you know, unless you're sitting in those seats right there, you don't realize that that's a giant crash pad. You just kind of see this dark area where the light isn't shining. So he goes off the edge and everybody in the arena was like, oh, wow, that was awesome. Whereas everybody watching on TV is just kind of like, oh, yep. All right. Whatever. I have a better idea. This is what they should have done. Falls count anywhere. Have them like go to the back, but somehow like they, they lose them. Right. And they're like, oh, well, all right. On to the next match. So they do that. And at some point later on in the show, because they had that giant ass screen in the entrance way, have them somehow all of a sudden say, oh, my God, it points up. They're both up there because Shane has fallen off of higher stuff. Right. But yeah, but but so many people would be like, the, was it Hawk who they had pretended to commit suicide by jumping yeah. off there? Yeah. yeah. Like, so many people would bring that up. You couldn't. There's no way you can do that. True. But. Uh, it would have been cool. Shane falls off, and then uh, Miz does a splash oh. on top of him. And it's worth noting, since you brought up the entryway, this was the most boring, most generic was. entryway they've ever. It really done. was. It was just a big rectangle TV screen, with and that's it. Cut out, and that's nothing it. Nothing else. They did this augmented reality thing, like they did at the Royal Rumble, and they did WrestleMania last year, where certain people would come out and you'd see stuff floating in the air. And every so often before a match, they'd go to the ring and the, the big rectangle sitting on top, they would show like this giant version of the people uh, in the match superimposed up there. But it was just like, you looked at it. Like I kept waiting for it to rise up so that stuff would come out underneath or something. Uh, to be fair, they did open the panels for the triple H Batista for them to drive out in, the lamest, most horrible yep. um, entry of all time, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, but, but it was just, it was just a big rectangle. Nothing, nothing else. Nothing. It's just a big rectangle. That's that where we are now. Uh, yeah, and so I was like really disappointed. Like there was nothing. You watch that, and they're like, you, you, not even like a couple of years ago, they did the, they had a big circle. And then the two rectangles coming out of the side. And I was like, man, that is so plain. That looks terrible. It was like a big play button because the network, you know, you're like, man, that sucks. That looks terrible. But this is, this, this is probably like the lowest point. There's no way anything will be as bad as that. And then this year they did it. They were just like, screw it. We're just doing a rectangle. We don't care. Doesn't matter. And there, someone in back is going, well, you know, those are uh, high capacity uh, LED screens with a uh, uh, 720,000 DPI so we can get uh, 16K Ultra HD on the screen. It's like, who cares? You don't do anything with it anyway because all you do is like flash a name and some smoke or a name and a lightning bolt. or an, like They look like they're doing impact entrances from 2012. It's like, what is going on with WWE entrances, there's no video. There's no, you know, loops of people getting punched in the face. They don't do any of the fun stuff they used to do. It's just like, here's the name, and it's the name plate, exactly like what you'd buy on the T-shirt, and then with maybe some wavy background behind it or some. Yeah, it's that's it's it. very it's generic and it, it kind of just lazy. I miss the Titan Trons, man. Yeah. So Delvis called this rectangle rectangle mania. Rectangle Mania. So there you go. Uh, it was not. It, it was. It was like that was another thing that was just really disappointing about. That. I call it the show that that cured dirt's insomnia. That's <laughs> just me. Um, yeah. So this was not a good match, and even the big bump they did just like the bump that Shane took off the golf cart roof looked Better more horrific than, that, than yes. one. Yeah. But but the gimmick was Miz picked up Shane and suplexed him, but because of the way they fell, Shane landed on top of Miz. One, two, three, Shane wins. Yay. Which I feel is the same ending they've done before in one of these matches where somebody went off, I think, the edge of the stage on Raw, but landed on top of Oh yeah, I'm sure. Switch. So it, it was another where it's like they over gimmick the ending and it didn't care. Uh, let's see. We had Bailey versus Sasha Banks versus Nia Jackson Tamina versus Natalia and Beth Phoenix versus Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, the iconics for the women's tag team titles. And I told you the belts were going on the iconics at some point. You could just tell the way that they were telling the story that eventually you could you could also see uh, uh, one good tell is Sasha Banks in her entrance. If she doesn't look happy then you know that she's losing. Well, and apparently she almost quit 
Yeah. WWE. I, I, yeah, I just read that before we started the show. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, she was under the impression that she and Bailey would have the belts for like a year in order to build up the belts and make them important because no one else can do that except her and Bailey. Um, and and to be fair, I know originally, like two months ago, going into WrestleMania, the idea was um that the night was gonna end, and this is part of the reason why they took the belt off um Asuka and put it on Charlotte was the original idea was at the end of the night, you were going to have Bailey and Sasha with the tag team titles. You'd have Charlotte with the SmackDown title and uh, Becky Lynch with the Raw title. And it was the four horsewomen of NXT who had graduated to Raw, had, had pushed women's wrestling um, to the highest level and had now, they were ending WrestleMania. They all had titles. Um, so it was the idea that, that they had, this chapter of moving from the divas to the women's division, that chapter was now over. And now the women's division was just as epic and regular and normal as the men's division. That was the original idea with all these belts uh, going into mania. And then we know things change, things change as you go. And in fact, things change right up until the first match of WrestleMania, things are being changed behind the scenes. So that went out the window Charlotte keeping a belt went out the window. Like all of that was flushed down the toilet. But yes, yeah, Sasha uh, was just not happy. Uh, and that I will say, I will give credit. Uh, Nia Jackson, Tamina, they came in, they did some moves, they left, they were out for ten minutes, came back in, did some moves, left. Like they were not, they knew they were not the focus, and they were not supposed to spend all their time in there. Um, but uh. Oh, and Bret Hart did come down with uh, Natalia and Beth Phoenix, and he watched from ringside uh, during the match. But, of course, they didn't win. Um, <laughs> they never win. But, uh, but uh, you know, it was, it was, again, again, it's, it was okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't great. It was, if this had been a main event on SmackDown, uh, you probably would have been like, oh, yeah, okay, that was pretty good. But, you know, where we are in the night, watching all these other matches, some of the stuff we've already seen. And then the way we're kind of getting pissed off with some of the other stuff happening on the show, it's just like, ah, this was not a great match. This was not a showcase of the women's division showcase of the immortals. Yeah, no, this is the showcase of the people who have careers. Yeah. 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 But the, the, I, I'm happy for the iconics having the belt. I think that could turn into some decently entertaining stuff because they do work very well as a team. Now, separately, they're they're not good, but as a team, they they make it work. I I don't like I I I could just tell that they were getting the belts. I don't know that they necessarily deserve them. I'm not a huge fan of the Iconics in general, but I, like I said, I could just you could just tell by the way they were doing interviews and the way they were doing the vignettes that I could just tell that they were going to be getting the belts at some point. But I do uh one thing I do enjoy though is when they did win to actually see that genuine emotion. I always appreciate that. Like anytime you see those uh men or women that have taken years and years to one get to the company, but to reach a point, especially with those two, because they sort of got into the business together and they've right. been friends for a yeah, really long time. They, they work well together as a team yeah. and they have that ability to complete each other's sentences. And yeah. And so so I, they, I, I like that genuine emotion that, that you see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so then we got the match of the night. This was the match of the night. Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston for the WWE title. This, this was the should have been main event. Um, they both put everything they had into this match. WWE did not over gimmick it. They did not have to have uh, a whole lot of interruptions and everybody getting involved. They let them have a match. The match was great. It was exciting. It was high energy. It was everything you wanted in a WWE match, uh, especially in a main event. Uh, where it should have been. Uh, Kofi Kingston, of course, won the title. Uh, finally, the dream realized. Um, New Day, they said they had a surprise for him ringside. They took the old, they had the, the Daniel Bryan belt. Uh, and I told you this was going to happen. They threw it away. They pulled off the curtain and there was the old belt, the, the, uh, the normal 
belt back. And so they gave him the belt. And then uh, I saw some kids running in the ring. And I was like, oh, no, those kids are going to pull a Bret Hart on Kofi. But no, it was his kids. It was okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that father so, comes out and just starts punching them. <laughs> so, uh, so then they pull out the t-shirts that, you know, there's a new champ. Um, everybody, they put them on the kids. They put them on themselves. They were wearing them. And apparently WWE put these on the online shop about an hour before the match. So anybody who went to WWE.com and did a search for new day merchandise, found the shirt saying there's a new champ and had the whole thing spoiled. I mean, I, I get the 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 point of it. You want it like up there, ready to go. Uh, at the and, same and time, I heard people complaining about it being spoiled, but at the same time, it's like you it's knew really spoiled. Yeah, it's like it because if it didn't happen, I wouldn't have watched Raw. Uh, you know I what think, I mean? I, I think there would have been like fires that would have started. In the, yeah, in the yeah, there would have been, uh, people setting trash cans in the bathroom on fire. Yeah. But I, I go back to the the genuine emotion part uh, to see when he won and to see Xavier and Big E like they're hugging him and like Xavier is actually like crying. I there's just something about that. The, that that's like the the good stuff, the real stuff, not not the overproduced. Oh wow, what a moment! Yeah, and and I I appreciate the fact that the other two guys who are with him, they didn't tease. A oh well now he's won the belt. Why didn't I win the belt? Have Xavier no. be mad at him? You know what I mean? Because you yeah, I, I, always and, when they do one of these things, they have to break up the team and have the other guys become jealous. I mean, there's um, still time, but I hope I hope they don't do it. I've always thought of with the way that the new day has been, if they were to ever do something differently, like break them up or whatever, have it just be like uh not someone's turning heels, but all right, yeah, we're going our separate ways. We're doing our own thing and leave right. it that. And then they do bring have back. our shakeup coming up. So it is possible. That yeah. I, I could see oh. like Big E and Xavier going being a tag else. team on SmackDown and they can move uh, Kofi over to raw. Maybe, you know, but if know. they moved Kofi to raw, they'd have to move Seth Rollins to SmackDown. Right, they could do that. SmackDown, well, SmackDown is going to have to have some big changes in the next couple months because it is moving to Fox. True. And and it's not moving to Fox Sports, it's moving to Fox. Yeah. So it is going to be on the network. So of the four major national networks, NBC, CBS, ABC, and Fox, it is going to be on Fox Friday nights. So oh, um, that leaves open a spot on Tuesdays. It does, except I don't think... AEW originally wanted that Tuesday night spot and they had uh, copyrighted a name, but with them going to TBS or TNT, uh, which seems to be confirmed all but confirmed at this point, um, they can't do Tuesday nights because of the NBA, because of the NBA contract huh. uh, games. So Wednesday or Thursday is, is where you're going to, I think Thursday would be good. I mean, SmackDown was a Thursday show for a yep. little time. So was Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, they put a bunch of new thunders on the network a couple weeks. Yeah, ago. I need to check some of those out. But they, they're not still; they're still not quite the ones I'm looking for. But but it's still good. You got a bunch. Which of Which ones are you? Ninety eight, ninety nines. I want I want like the the final nine months of thunder. Like I want the in the toilet thunders from the very end of it. Uh, there were a lot of cru good, like really awesome cruiserweight matches on those. There thunders. were there were a yeah. lot of fun uh, lower card matches that didn't get any sort of you know it when when Tank Abbott and and. Uh, and Three like, count. Rick Steiner. Well, no, I was gonna say when Tank Abbott and Rick Steiner were doing their feud, where they were dropping like the fenced in circle uh, in the ring, and they were fighting in that little fenced in cage. Uh, when they were doing that terrible stuff on Thunder, you had some good stuff going on in the undercard. But, but Tank Abbott and Three Count, I was entertained. I, have to yeah, I was. I was too. I hate to admit it, but I, I was. All right. They did the backstage thing where they did uh, the two guys from Saturday Night Live with Alexa Bliss. They had Kevin Nash and Scott Hall come back up. They were dressed as the doctors. They were putting on the rubber gloves because they were going to do prostate exams. Made a joke. Ha ha. Um, yeah. Uh, was this the part where Ron Simmons came in or was that later? I, I don't I, honestly, I don't remember oh. either. Uh, Booker T came out to do commentary for the next match. Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio for the U.S. title. Now, Ray, his ankle was injured. He legitimately injured it several weeks before. You know, they had been having those talks uh, about whether or not he would be showing up on SmackDown to do stuff, whatever. 
But apparently that was not the reason why this match was cut. Um, Samoa Joe and Ray were looking at the card. They were looking at how much time had already passed, how many matches they still had to go. They apparently went to Vince and said, look, let us do a quick match. Let's do something. It'll be shocking. It'll be surprising. It'll be, you know, fast. It'll, it'll set up Joe to look great. Uh, you know, m- this is partly Mysterio's idea. He thought it was great to get Joe over. Um, and they knew it was a good way to just kind of quickly speed things along in the show. And Vince said, okay, go for it. So again, show is being changed while it was happening. Um, because of the other stuff going on. So they just had a quick match. It was a, like a minute long. Ray got in a move, went for the 619, but Joe uh, turned it into the clutch and choked him out. And that was it. It was over. Um, and, and it was one of those things where you're watching it and you're like, what the, like, what, what? Like I was kind of expecting something more and it didn't, but again, overall theme of the night of everything going too long. It was nice to see that it, they didn't kill a lot of time to make it go another half hour, even though it's a match I would still like to see. Um, Delva said, I want to see a match like Nathan was talking about going on throughout the, the show all over the arena between James Ellsworth and Gilberg. Well, what you'd have a problem with that. Cause Ellsworth ran into some issues a few months ago with, I guess uh, sending naked pictures of himself to underage girls or something. I don't. It it was. I don't. I don't expect Ellsworth to be back. Yeah. Well, and I think part of the issue was like he he didn't know. It was just one of those things like girls were flirting with him, so he went he flirted back, and then you find yeah. out later like mm, maybe you should have asked for some ID, but um, kind of like a Jerry Lawler situation a couple times. Right. But, Anyway, um, he said it'd be great though if it had no real coverage. You just see them fighting in the background. So it's like there, there'd be you know the match would be done. There'd be like a playing. backstage interview. This and, match is yeah, going on in, in behind. You see them like on the top layer of the stadium, like fighting behind the screen area. <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. Like they could have either done that with Braun and the Saturday Night Live guys, or have Miz and Shane just right. that match keep going throughout the night. I, I yeah. it would have been something different at least. All right, so then we had Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre, and again, this was yeah. low. It, 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 it was, was there. It looked. It, it was like a raw main event. It was well, and I would say it was even worse than a raw main event because well, yeah, one of those, it went. It went way too long. Like it went. Yeah. I want to say it went like twenty five minutes or something like that, and it should have gone like ten or twelve. Dirt. It's it's Roman's first singles match back since beating. Mm. You gotta you gotta show that he is indeed the big dog. Apparently, um, the upper deck was doing a wave during the match, and the people were more into the wave in the upper deck than they were the actual match. Uh, and then when Reigns won, of course, he did the thing where he put his head on the turnbuckle and cried because it was so emotional. Well, I mean, I get it for for him. Imagine like going through that leukemia coming back, but nobody getting- cared. No, I know, I, dude. I know that the it's a, we're, we're already at the point where people are already starting to boom again. Like, and then we had Elias come out. Yeah. And so you knew we knew going into it, something was going to happen with Elias. Someone this big was, this, was gonna come in. this was my probably one of my favorite parts of the night. <laughs> I am not going to lie. So okay, here's the thing. He he's he comes out and he starts doing his little spiel. They had like video of him playing drums and playing piano and it was synced together with him playing guitar. And you're like, wow, he is musically talented. That's cool. It's, it's kind of weird to see this. Then they had some video interrupted him and it starts talking about New York and it's talking about uh, the Mets or the Yankees or whatever. And Babe Ruth, <laughs> yes. yeah. Babe Ruth calling yeah. his shots. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're like, okay, I don't understand. And then John Cena's Thugonomics song yeah. hits and he comes out and apparently – if you've seen him in any of the commercials or promotional stuff he's been doing, he has this really dumb haircut where he looks like Ernest P. Worrell, where he's got he's got like longer hair and it's like combed over. It looks so terrible. So apparently I think he looks dignified. He is a Hollywood movie star now. No, dude. no, it's for a role. It's for a role. And uh, so in order to cover it up because he can't shave his head or whatever, for whatever reason, he had the the baseball cap on backwards 
So it leads to the Doctor of Thugonomics yes. gimmick because you can do that. So the crowd ate it out, up. Dude. Yeah, the crowd was, seen a chance. Crowd was hot for it. He um, and because he was the old Cena, he made fun of his movies. He made fun of WWE. Mm -hmm. He of course made fun of Elias. Yep. Um, he said some non PG things. It was great. Um, and then of course he attacked Elias and left. So. It was great. I loved it. I loved it. Just so because, then, bring him, bring him back as Thugonomics. Let him well, do yeah, that. Yeah, which is fine, but uh, he's still in the middle of whatever doing this movie stuff. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, that's so, what I would have Cena do from here on out. Just come do a rap, interrupt somebody, give them, well, give them, the, give them the fu. WWE WWE believes that that Cena, like The Rock, is less interested in coming back and doing stuff as Cena is. Cena wants to come back and wrestle off and on in between the movies. Rock is willing to come back and make an appearance here and there between movies. So WWE wants to push Cena more. And because Cena's doing movies, because he is a mainstream star, people actually know him who are not wrestling fans. They think they can position Cena in such a place where he will be a bigger legend than Hulk Hogan. So they are, are priming him to be the face of professional wrestling in wrestling and in Hollywood TV shows, reality shows, commercials, whatever, until Cena is 85. Like, he is going to be the guy who, who like, for the old school guys, we all think Flair. Then there's the rock and wrestling guys who are thinking, we all think Hogan. Um, all the guys from Attitude want to think Stone Cold. Um, some of the newer guys, of course, they still look back at the rock. Um, but but for, they think that John Cena is going to be the guy who replaces the legend of everybody else. And is the pro wrestling sports entertainment guy for all of entertainment. From that I mean, that, that's fair. I mean, when it you makes think, sense to a certain degree. Yeah, when sure. you think about it, he he has been just that that face of whatever era you want to call this, the crap era. But if he comes back, though, he needs to. If he comes back to wrestle again, he needs some sort of new shtick. It's yeah. got to be beyond the never give up. It's got to go beyond thugonomics. It's got he's got to find something new, and I don't know what that is, but they got to find it. Um, Delvis says that uh, they need to do a suburban commando remake with Cena or Mister Nanny. Um, I think no. I think those movies never need to be mentioned uh, or seen or touched ever again. Even though Tyler. Uh, you know, of course, because it's Hogan and their movies. I think Tyler has some sort of weird fetish. Oh, uh, he, well, he likes Noel's Bard and Suburban Commando. Uh, okay, but not Mr. Nanny. No, Miss, yeah, Mr. Nanny's trash. Suburban Commando, it's not great, but it's it's fun for what it is. Plus, you got Undertaker in there, so why not? All right, next we got another one of the worst matches of the night. We had Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. <sighs> this. Uh... I will say Kurt Angle moved a little more fluidly in this match than he had been on Raw, so I don't know if they like... Yeah, they probably just injected him with something. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, was, right, I, I don't know if they went to one of those... Wh whatever the, the thing is they make from uh, from marijuana, what is the the o, ODC um, Dude, I don't fluid, know. whatever. I forget what it is, but it's like they take out the THC, but they make like this... this like this oil this ointment out of it yeah. and you can use it to yeah like, i can see what or whatever. Like this will last approximately 23 minutes you need to go out there now <laughs> and do your thing yeah I, what a sad way to end a career cbd oil delvis knows of course you know delvis <laughs> um but yeah cbd oil so yeah so i i bet they they gave him a bunch of that so he went out there they did the quick match with him and baron corbin of course uh, to give Kurt Angle credit, he lost the match because he is a guy, even though he was a real wrestler who got into professional wrestling later, he quickly loved every aspect of professional wrestling. Um, he quickly became a pro wrestling guy. He respected the business. He respected the locker room. Um, he's one of those guys that that even though he came from an outside place and got into it later, like Goldberg, unlike Goldberg, Kurt Angle is one of those guys who he, he was a good company man. He was a good team player. 
Um, everybody respects him backstage. So he knew on his way out, he should not win. And apparently there had been discussions like Kurt, no, like everybody loves you just beat Baron Corbin. And Kurt said, no, like I'm leaving the company. I'm retiring. I, I can beat him up on raw the next night, but I don't need to beat him at WrestleMania. He should go over on me because he's the young guy staying with the company. Yeah. And so all credit to Kurt angle. Fantastic for allowing that. But it's Corbin Burns and nobody cares. Yep. So. Yeah. It was what it was. It was what it was. Uh, so then he wanted everybody to chant, you suck at him. And they did. And he cried. And it was one of those things. <laughs> the, 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 the three minutes after the match was better than the actual match. Yeah. Then we had the Demon versus Bobby Lashley for the Intercontinental title. Yeah, this match put me to sleep. They did uh, cut some time. Apparently, this was supposed to go a lot longer than it actually did to allow... Th there was supposed to be some sort of thing about how Finn Balor couldn't pull off certain moves, but now the Demon could, and it was supposed to freak out Bobby Lashley, and it was supposed to scare Leo Rush. But instead, they were like, you guys got... 12 minutes instead of 25 or whatever so they cut a whole bunch of the stuff out they just went for the big moves and some of the quick stuff and got it over and that was it Finn um, Balor your new champion <laughs> yeah um I mean whatever I don't, I don't care that he beat yeah. actually it's just it yeah. was not a good match it was not yeah. a good match they announced 82,265 which was totally a lie that was at it's least it's always a lie I mean, I think I think the actual number is something like sixty-eight, and even the sixty-eight thousand includes everybody with credentials. So everybody from the company who was there in the stadium also counted towards that sixty-eight thousand. So, well, I mean, they are in attendance. <laughs> they 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 are there. They, you know, <laughs> the guy the guy collecting money at parking. He's a person. He's, He's there. there at the show. He's, He's there. You're part of it, buddy. So there you go. Um, but then Alexa Bliss said, it's time for a break. And nothing happened. It's time for a break. Nothing happened. It's time for a break. She turns around. It's time for a break. Ha, 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 ha. It's funny. Out comes R-Truth and Carmella, which, like, I love R-Truth. That's, you know, this is not the time when you're this far into the show and people nope. just want it to be over to do a time-wasting gimmick. Um, so then they said it's time for a break. So they came out. It's time to do their seven second dance off or dance break, seven second dance break, which of course went for like 35 seconds before they cut to the backstage. Um, wait, we skipped, we skipped the match. We skipped the uh, Triple H Batista thing. Oh, we totally did. Yeah, that was after we've not seen the segment. We totally skipped it. Shame. So this was the one time during the night they did something big with the entryway. They, um, they had this Mad Max. Yeah, video. I'm like, dude, that was like four years <laughs> ago. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road just came out, apparently. And, and it's like the same gimmick he had last year, right? Where he was like the green Conan on the four-wheeler with Stephanie on the back. Wasn't that yeah. also Mad Max inspired? I don't know. Um. So, yeah, so he they, they, they were playing this video of the people in the desert. And then it cuts to the scene where they're just driving. And it's just like placeholder footage of these CGI cars, just driving, kicking up sand. And then part of the screen opened and out comes this grandpa monsters off-road dune buggy. And it was being driven by the ECW zombie. And there's triple H on the back of this thing. And it's the, the car was like too long for the turn it takes to come around to go down the entryway. So the guy is like going at like half a mile an hour trying to figure out and readjust as he's turning. Yeah. Cause he doesn't want to drop like the back wheel off, like as he's making this turn. So grandpa Munster's dune buggy driven by the ECW zombie comes down and triple H is sitting there on the back doing the thing. And Oh my gosh, I saw people, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. This is the greatest entrance of all time. Triple H is so awesome. Like, well, I'm glad that they got brainwashed into thinking so. After all this time, people are someone, like, you know what? Yeah, that he's badass. Someone's getting their $2 entertainment out of this. But <sighs> it's like, if they had done this in 2004, maybe. Or 2014, yeah. whatever, when the movie yeah. came out, maybe. But I, to, to me, most of these entrances have always been sort of just Pokey. yeah 
<clears throat> and and the problem is he thinks it builds up the legend of him being this. Well, that's what you got it. That's what he has to do because when you think about it, uh, it's revisionist history all over again. Like in the Attitude Era, he was yeah he was champion. Yeah, but he was the champion that always won by cheating or having DX. Well, I mean, or... you you always he was never he was never the baddest guy in the bunch. You always had Rock and Austin, whose star power was, or just, even Mankind. Yes, just constantly. Or Undertaker. Him. Yes. So <laughs> you know through the, down the list. and it started in the mid two thousands when he did Evolution, had the Reign of Terror and everything. It's like look how important Triple H is because all these other guys had started to go, and that's when all the fans started tuning out as well. How how coincidental is that? Yeah. But yeah, so these anyway. yeah these entrances are just terrible. Yeah. Terrible. So anyway, they did this match and it was uh, no holds barred Triple H's career at stake. Um, and so the whole point was like they had these weapons, they had a toolbox that they pulled out that had tools in it. And, and you know, Batista had been coming out with this nose ring. So they had this thing where Triple H has these pliers and he comes down and they get this camera to go in the ring and to go right over Triple H's shoulder. So you see it come down and you see it get real close. And you see, like the way Batista's moving his head and the way Triple H is moving his head, trying to get these these like pliers onto the nose ring, and then Triple H just kind of covers it up with his hand, so you can't really see what's going on. And then, boom, they just kind of pop back, and he's like, "I got it, I got it," and he covers it up with his hand and he pulls out this nose ring that he's showing to everybody, and the nose ring looks like this. Like it's not like a nose ring like someone actually wears. It's like this this round C, and you can see Batista rolling over like pulling it out of his nose and putting it in his hand and sliding it to the ref i mean it was just <laughs> the dumbest looking angle like if you're gonna do that like it needs to be gimmicked a hundred times better than what they did i don't know if that was like a last minute addition where they were just like oh no i'll throw something in the toolbox well like right before they take it out let's do it let's throw this thing in there but if this was something that was like a pre-planned like this is going to be one of our big spots in the match they totally botched the entire thing yep. it looked terrible it was so hokey looking and again this is a match that was slow and it mm. went on forever and if it had ended 10 minutes earlier you might have hated it half as much i think well, by this point i was uh feeling kind of drunk so <laughs> so i was just sort of like staring at the tv just zoning out so this is so this was before the kurt angle baron corbett so so we had just to recap, we had the Daniel Bryan Kofi, and you were like, wow, that's great. Then we had Samoa Joe Ray, and you are like, what the heck? And then we had the Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre, and you were like, that was a dud. We had Triple H Batista, you were like, that was a dud. We had Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin, that was a dud. We had Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor, that was a dud. Then we get to the main event. I will be 100% honest with you, the two other people I was sitting in the room with, they both fell asleep at different points during this match. Yep. I mean, it was 11 o'clock at night already. We had been sitting there for hours watching mm -hmm. this thing. It's, yeah. They, they were done. I didn't care. Like, th like, this match, as far as I'm concerned, if this had been a three-minute match of high-impact spots with Becky going over, four stars, great. But instead, they had a full half-hour match. They did a thing where Charlotte had to recreate her dad's uh, entry to, was it Starcade 90 or... Starcade 84, 94, I don't remember, but came in on the helicopter and landed, rolled out the red carpet. She came out. They had Joan Jett set up during this point so that she could play Rhonda's song. Um, but, you know, at this point, it's like nobody cared. Yep. All these entrances were just like people were like, I don't care. Just get done with it. Yep. Like, people, are looking to go Jett. people are looking at Joan Jett and they're like, just be done. Be gone. Glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Leave. Uh, I just want this over with. Um, so at least like Becky came out, nothing. She just like walked out. I think they had some smoke or whatever, some steam coming out of some pipes. And because she, she used to do the steampunk gimmick. Yeah. Where she had the steampunk cloak with all the weird stuff on it. And she had the top hat with the goggles and stuff. She doesn't wear any of that anymore, but they still gave her all the steam when she came out. Would have been nice back when she had the gimmick, but she comes out and they do this match and the match was not good. Yeah. I mean, the match was really now Rhonda. Apparently, at some point in this match, she broke her hand. She went to throw a punch, and the punch connected, and she actually potatoed 
and broke a bone in her hand. And so how about that? Isn't it, isn't it funny? The one that's been sitting here like, oh, this is this is fake and all, you know, the, playing off of that whole thing. And she breaks her hand on a work punch that ended up being a potato. Huh? So then like, like Becky goes out and gets a table and she goes to put it in the ring. But then Rhonda like reverses it, reverses whatever move that was the, the setup for it. So you have Becky like sitting on the top turnbuckle and Rhonda is standing there like she's going to grab her and flip her under the table. And then she's looking around at the crowd. She's like, you people want tables? You want pe No tables. Tables are for bitches. And she throws the table uh, across the <laughs> ring. And you're just like, what? Yeah. Like what? This is dumb. Uh, so then, you know, they, they kept like a lot of the moves kept happening in slow motion or, or like they would, someone would be in the corner and they were going to whip them across the other corner. So they grab them and they would like go to pull them. But before they could actually do the motion of pulling them, the person started running, you know, um, just a lot of stuff that was just timed awkward. And, you know, it's like you get in front of a crowd and your adrenaline's up and it's, you know, finally your chance and whatever. So whatever. But, uh, the eventually, um, what Ronda Rousey, she goes for some move with Becky up on her shoulders and Becky like reverses it into a, a pen. A, it wasn't a small cradle. It was a, a crucifix. Like a, well, yeah, like a slide, like a crucifix yeah. slide, backslide. And, uh, but Ronda's shoulders don't quite come down all the way, but the ref still counts one, two, three. Um, and, and apparently the ref got fined yeah. for doing this because he's supposed to do it as a shoot. If the shoulders are not up, you don't do it. And he's sitting there thinking, this is the go home of the main event at WrestleMania. I'm going to do it. And so Vince yelled at him backstage and uh, they find him his pay for the night. So uh, I don't know how much they find him of his pay, but yeah, took a hit. I would hate that. So now they can they can play off the fact that her shoulders weren't down for the yeah. full three pin when she comes back. But because she she wanted to take time off anyway, and she legitimately hurt her hand so that was that so that was seven and a half hours of wrestlemania Ugh. and roll yep. smackdown uh we're, <laughs> okay. we're not wait, wait, okay okay we're, wait, we're wait, not wait, even wait. gonna break that down we're not even gonna go segment by segment we're just gonna talk about some of the stuff that stuck out to us on this show i or these shows i got done with wrestlemania and it was late and we came home Went to bed, woke up. We had to get up at six o'clock the next oh, morning. Oh, we get up at six and we go out to to this break. My my son is homeschooled, and there's like this breakfast um, meeting thing happens at Chick Fil A like once a month, uh, six thirty in the morning. So got to get up at six, be there at six thirty. So they're doing their thing, their 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 homeschooler thing, and I'm sitting there on my laptop, and I was just like looking at the headlines and places like. ESPN are doing like a Triple H and Batista tore the house down at WrestleMania last night with the most brutal. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, is this a paid promotion from WWE? Yes. Like, did yes. they give you money in order yes. for you to put the story? Yep. And, and and I'm looking at like everywhere there are these things. Like everybody's posting, you know, USA Today. It's the greatest WrestleMania of all time, and the women have made history and changed the world. And wrestling will never be the same. And I'm and I'm looking at this and I was just so angry. And so I was like, I'm writing something for our website. So just sitting there right there, I just just started typing. And I just started typing. And when I was done, I grabbed some pictures and I threw them in the thing and I put it up on the website. And it was one of the highest trafficked things. Got the most hits of anything we've done actually in a while. I <laughs> I I was like, I hate wrestling. I was like, I hate <laughs> WWE. This is the worst show of all time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to watch, uh, you know, Raw and SmackDown for a long time after this. I don't want to see anything WWE product. Um, here's hoping that AEW can do something better in the future because this is terrible. Yep. And and again, it was one of the it got some of the best traffic we've had on the site. But it was just kind of like a, off the top of my head. I just was so angry at that show. Uh, Delvis asked, do the refs know how the matches are supposed to end? Yes. Most of the time, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. Uh, especially if there's a key thing, like a title change, um, or if there's some sort of like weird 
you know, someone's going to tap out, but you don't see it because of the way you're turned. That's going to lead to a storyline. So they have to let them know. But the idea is because it's live, um, if, if you see it, you see the person tapping out and it's obvious you're seeing them tap out, then you have to wave it off and they have to get back up and rework the match and get back into the same spot and then try it again. And they'll do that for two reasons. One, it's live. So they don't want to give away that that was the ending and you work through it and you make it work. But second, if they, if they do it on a show that's going to be taped or they go to put it on the Blu-ray or they go to put it on the on demand or whatever, they'll cut out the first attempt and go into the second one. They'll make a yeah. seamless edit. Yeah. Um, so like Batista during the show, when he went to get in the ring, he actually tripped on the ropes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you go back and watch it now, it's not there. Yeah. Because he got it. He tripped. He got in. He kind of looked at the crowd, did a thing. He got out on the other side. He walked around the ring, climbed back up and did it a second time. Yeah. Cause I see, mean, I even it. they must have done it quick because even after uh, having that break where I had to come back to it, I didn't even know that he had tripped. So, yeah, I don't know if they. Because that would have stuck out to me. I don't, I don't know if they have for their video on demand if the way it works is they have like a separate queue of the file going in there. Maybe just in case like there's a terrorist attack or something, they may have some secondary feed that they can use for the video on demand instead yeah. of it being the live feed. I don't know. But uh, yeah, this was not a good show. So, so Raw the next night, I tried to watch it. I got about five minutes into it. My wife is like, I can't take this. She got up. She left. <laughs> I sat there for about another 10 Did minutes. Did she watch mania with you? No, no, she okay. didn't. She couldn't even get through the first of raw. Yeah. So, uh, I watched the first few minutes of it and I was like, after about like 10, 15 minutes, whatever, I couldn't even take it anymore. I just started yeah. going through like, I've got yeah, some yeah. Australian rules wrestling to, or Australian rules football to watch. I'm going to, I'm going to watch some Australian of Australian rules wrestling, Australian rules football. It's, uh, it's, it's like live action, Quidditch meets rugby. It's weird. But anyway, um, so eventually I go back and I go to watch Raw. And it's like, I'm just, I'm like fast forwarding. I'm fast I nothing happened. I, I just waiting for like these big moments. Uh, you know, they have Kurt Hawkins, Zack Ryder, who cares? They had Baron Corbin do a promo. They had uh, Kurt Angle beat him up you know, to get his win back on raw. Then they had Lars Sullivan debut, mm -hmm. which I know Lars Sullivan coming out is a big deal, but could they spend more than the $12 and 95 cents to use the bleeding comic sans font on his butt on his trunks? Because it looks so cheap and so generic. It looks like using the creator wrestler yeah. on WWE, like just laying out the letters and putting the fake little blood drops on his trunks looks so bad. Um, and I guess his gimmick is that he's like some wild, crazy madman. I don't know what the deal New is. New Snitsky, man. But but not as uh, not as attractive as Snitsky. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> um, they talked about there was going to be a superstar shakeup. Nobody cared. <laughs> uh, they had Alexa Bliss. Uh, she wanted to wrestle because she didn't get a chance on WrestleMania. So Bailey comes out and she just beats the crap out of Bailey. Yeah. So, I think this is another reason too why Sasha was pissed and it was uh, asked for her release and all that stuff is because the plan was, I think for bliss to beat up both of them. And she's like, all right, well we just lost the titles. Now you're doing this. Like I could see the creative frustration. Yeah, maybe, but it was not, it wasn't a good. Yeah. A good it wasn't, anyway. it wasn't a good. Becky Lynch came out, cut a promo and, and it was fine. Her promo was fine. Whatever. Um, and then of course she gets to the end, she goes to leave and out comes Lacey Evans and does her thing. And so you're like, okay, whatever Lacey Evans gets right in her face. Then Lacey Evans clocks Becky Lynch. <gasps> so mm. she finally did something. Yeah. And apparently WWE thinks that, um, Lacey Evans is going to be like the next big thing. Oh, next great. Show. Next big. Great. Mm, we'll see how that goes. Um, they announced that Dean Ambrose is having his final match in WWE tonight against Bobby Lashley. Nobody cared. Yep. Um, let's see. They had, uh, oh, I, I guess I glossed over the whole thing with Seth Rollins at the beginning. So Seth Rollins came out, talked about how he won the title. Kofi came out, talked about he won the title. He said, you know, the women had the unification match last night. We'll have a unification match tonight. 
Automatically, and, when I saw that, I'm like, all right, there's going to be some BS finish. There's yeah. just, there's no way. Like, some, who, who in their right mind would be like, oh my God, they're going to, no, it's not going to happen. But apparently people were legitimately upset at the end of the night. But Well, we had, for different reasons. We had Ricochet and Aleister Black against Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. Um, it it was fine. Um, like I tried to watch this because, of course, I like Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. I like Ricochet, Aleister Black. I'm still kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, it was it was okay, but again, it wasn't inspired. There was nothing great about it. It was just another uh, ten minute TV match. It was nothing special. Um, Elias talked about how he um, he wasn't going to uh, you know be interrupted by John Cena tonight. He's going to go out and have his moment once and for all. Um, they did, uh, the return of the zombie gobbledygooker. Apparently, uh, Bray Wyatt has apparently found the remains of the gobbledygooker and is reanimating him as a zombie and bringing him back as part of the Wyatt clan. Great. Yep. Um, cool. we had Dean Ambrose versus Bobby Lashley in his final match. Um, it was pretty terrible. Yep. Um, I mean, um, Ambrose got put through a table and didn't matter. Nobody cared. Um, they had Zam- Sammy Zayn made his big appearance for. That was the only. Game. That was the only highlight of the show. That promo that he cut against the fans. That was great. Um, well, no, 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 because there were two. There were two good things on this show: Sammy Zayn and the Elias promo. Yeah, those were the two big things. Um, so Sammy Zayn came back. Um, he had a match with Finn Balor. It was actually a pretty good match. Um, it's I, I I like Sami Zayn. I'm a fan. I'm glad to see him back. Um, um, they is I don't know. Uh, again, it, it wasn't overly special, but it was still fun. It was a nice match. It was whatever. Yeah. Um, so Sami Zayn lost. He gets on the mic afterwards. He turns on the crowd. He goes heel. These people aren't worth it. Um, they're terrible. Whatever. <laughs> um, which was fine. They. Um, Oh, Delvis wants to say, what's this Wyatt family you were talking about? Like, uh, are you legit? Like, are you actually asking what's the, or is it the fact that everybody in the Wyatt family now has a different gimmick and has moved on and now it's Bray Wyatt by himself? The puppet. Um, with the him zombie. and a puppet. Yeah, it was like, zombie Googer. Or, or is that, is that zombie, um, um, Mr. Sacco? I don't know. Maybe that's what that was. I don't know. It, uh. it looked like one of the things from the Dark Crystal. One yeah. of the, uh, the crow things. But... Why? It's just terrible. Anyway. Um. Oh, the gobble- gobbledygooker thing. Del- okay. All right. D- uh, are you like? Do you not know what the Wyatt family is? Do you not know that that was the name of the of Bray Wyatt's stable of guys with Rowan and um, um, Harper, Harper and Braun, and Braun Strowman, Strowman and Randy Orton for a short while. And Daniel were, Bryan for a short while. Yeah, they were the Wyatt family. That was the name he gave them. They were supposed to be all his cousins and brothers and, and people that he brought into his cult and whatever. Um, that was that was Bray Wyatt doing the puppet. That was him doing the laugh of the puppet looking out of the box. So, I mean, either they they just they had nothing else for Bray Wyatt to do and they're doing a gimmick with zombie gobbledygooker and they just wanted him to be the guy to do it because he has a good laugh or... That is the Bray Wyatt gimmick. But yes, that is Bray Wyatt who is doing the puppet and the laugh on the show. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was Bray Wyatt. Yes. Um, I, I don't, again, I don't know that that's actually what that's leading to. Um, but uh, why does, why is he doing a rubber chicken demon puppet? I don't know. Um, they had Dana Brooke backstage. People were actually like applauding for Dana Brooke during WrestleMania during the women's battle Royal, because she stood up to Ronda Rousey and stood up for professional wrestling. So, um, so there was that. Where did that get her? Um, is she still employed? Yeah. That's more than some people. Yeah. I guess there's that. Uh, so Elias then goes out to the ring. He said, if John Cena was going to rap, then Elias was going to rap. He started to do this rap. Um, he, I don't know. He said something, I can do what I can. And the next person to interrupt Elias is a dead man. So of course, oh. um, lights go out undertaker, epic entrance. Like he usually does. He gets in the ring and he, he just stares at Elias and Elias is over in the corner and Elias is just kind of looking at him. 
and he just like pokes his head out of the the rope and he starts to climb through the rope and he just stops and you're like what is elias doing and then elias like he gets this look on his face like no everybody interrupts me everybody keeps doing this i'm not i'm not backing down and so he gets back into the ring and he sets the guitar down and he takes off his coat and he takes off his little bracelets and he takes off his necklaces and he walks over and he takes a couple steps towards Undertaker. And so then Undertaker takes a couple steps. Then he takes a couple steps and they get right face to face. And Undertaker, still wearing his coat, still wearing his hat, picks him up, hits him with a choke slam, knocks off his hat. So he picks up the hat, he puts it on. Um, oh, no, no, wait, wait. He, he hits him with it and then picks him up for the tombstone. Hits him with the tombstone, covers him one, two, three. Then picks up the hat, puts everything back on, um, and then turns around and leaves and just leaves Elias there. And apparently, this whole segment, it was a fun segment. It was great to watch. Like, that was a fun appearance by The Undertaker. Undertaker looks good. His physique looks much better than the last time we saw him. Fantastic. But apparently, all of that is a setup because the Saudi Arabia show this year is going to be Undertaker versus Elias. And apparently this is the beginning of that feud. I wish the people could have just seen me sitting here. I hate <laughs> that I have to like say something. I just. Uh, huh. So what do you think? Undertaker versus Elias. That's 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 a is that a uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Scott Hall? Oh, the doctor making noise, so you went silent there. I was trying to figure out what you were doing. Um, okay, so he's got barking dogs, so he's quiet right now. So he loves the idea. He thinks it's great. Is this going to be the greatest? Match? I mean, good on Taker for getting that Saudi Arabia money, but at the same time, too, I wish they would stop doing those shows. I know it makes them a lot of money, but uh, especially with last year and how sort of just bad that whole scenario was with the timing of everything. Yeah, I, like I can understand. No, like there's no government in the world that's 100% clean, right? Right. Like, you know, not even our government is 100% clean. We understand that. So there's always going to be problems. But when, like, a month before you're scheduled to do the show, um, your government decides to just kidnap a reporter and kill him. Mm hmm. Um, and apparently there's an audio recording of this that exists because he had a phone turned on in his pocket, dialed into his voicemail because he knew something was going to happen. So the sound of his murder exists. Um, that's probably not the time that you decide, you know, that you're going to promote that country. At the same time, though, you're obviously doing it for the money, the money. And that government is willing to pay you more money for one show than you make in a year yeah. off of everything else. Yeah, it's it's tough. I, but, it, I mean, it's cool, too, when they're like, I want Ultimate Warrior and Yokozuna. And you're like, huh. <laughs> well, uh, huh. <laughs> Got some bad news for you. Uh, I'd, I'd like hey, to you. see George Hackenschmidt make a return. Right. I mean, there's only so much you can do. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I mean, when people ask with the product that they put out and everything, how are how are they still making money and making more money than they ever did in the Attitude Era? There's your answer. Well, part of your answer anyway. Yeah. Well, and a lot of it is the ratings for the TV have gone down, but ratings for everything on TV has gone down. So when they compare the numbers now to the numbers 10 years ago, you go, wow, that's quite a big drop. When they look at it from 20 years ago, wow, that's a huge drop. But then at the same time, if you look at all of TV from 20 years ago compared to now, all of it's a huge drop. Yeah. So you, you kind of have to go along with, again, market share and how much of the people watching TV at the time are watching. And they still do pretty good in that regard. They're, they're not number one anymore, but they're still doing really good comparatively. Um, it's just that TV in general, has taken a big hit. Uh, broadcast television, cable television networks, they've all taken big hits in the last few years. So uh, that's, so, but for a lot of people, it's just habit. It's like Monday night, you turn on Raw, you watch wrestling. That's just how it goes. Um, so that's the thing. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. Um, but then we got the match that was supposed to be the unification match with Kofi and Seth Rollins. And of course, they did the thing 
where they go like 10 minutes and then the bar comes in and interrupts instead of doing it like two minutes in it's like you invest 10 minutes into this match then you get the interruption then they call off the match then they decide they're going to do an impromptu tag match instead Seth Bring is out like, the beach balls. Seth is like, hey, Kofi, you and I can settle this later. But right now, I want to fight these guys. And you can hear everyone in the crowd go, oh, no, no. But that's what they did. So, And Seth they, and Kofi won. Yeah. Imagine that. Them. Yeah. On the smack there. <laughs> well, you know, I, I like... I wonder if 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 part of this, I mean, obviously they're like, we're going to set up something big and then we're going to have someone interrupt. I wonder if part of it was the bar did so good in that WrestleMania match. We'll put him in the main event here on Raw. It'll get him, you know, back and back, you know, high in people's eyes because they had that great match. Then they'll have this great match tonight. And then they, they had an OK match. Like it was, well, it was all right. But, but they still lost. They still lost. And I I watched 90% of that on fast forward. Yeah. Um, I watched like usually the, the, the actual wrestling matches and there weren't a whole lot of them. So there wasn't a whole lot of that to watch and, you know, undertaker, whoa, what's this? <laughs> Go back. Let's, let's watch that. But otherwise it was like, I am not invested in this. I don't care anymore. I'm not watching. So as far as I'm concerned, raw's done. I'm not watching raw anymore. I have no interest in watching Raw in 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 10 months or whatever, whenever you know SmackDown makes their big move and they have to change everything on Raw and Raw gets reformatted and they actually do something with Raw. I'll check it out to see if it gets any better. For right now, I don't care. I'm done. The experiment was Royal Rumble through WrestleMania. We're done. I'm done. No more Raw. Not watching it. Uh... So then we had SmackDown. Yeah, I will say right now I've watched about ten minutes of the SmackDown. Fast forwarded through, nothing happened. Ninety percent of the show. Well, there was I, something of note, I guess, that <laughs> happened. There was a title change. <laughs> well, okay, so we got uh, Alistair Black, Ricochet, and Mustafa Ali. Oh, I'm sorry, Ali versus Nakamura, Nakamura, Rusev, and Andrade. But Shinsuke Nakamura is still Shinsuke Nakamura. He still gets two names. Yeah. So I don't know if they have another Shinsuke, somebody else coming in, or another Nakamura, what the deal is. But he gets to have two names. Um, you know, Randy Orton made a run in on Ali. No one cared. Okay, whatever. Um, they had r well, and well, I, I did like the part, RKO, he's walking up the ramp, and then Randy Orton's like, he's doing this thing, where he's like, oh, I can't see. Cause, oh yeah, because of the bright lights. Uh, Kevin Owens came out and attacked him, um, or no, attacked uh, Rusev. Um, so you've got a couple different feuds coming out of this. You're going to have Ali and Orton. Um, oh yeah, because AJ Styles is apparently injured. He um, mm -hmm. he injured what? He injured his hip, I think it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Last time I looked, I didn't know exactly what it was. I just saw a little blurb that he was injured. Yeah, so he's injured. He's out for a while. So. You're going to have Randy Orton versus Ali. You're going to have Kevin Owens versus Rusev. So at least they're going to break apart the Rusev Nakamura tag team, it looks like. Um, so let's see. We had um, Usos versus Hardys was announced for later in the night. R-Truth and Carmella came out. And, of course, I watched this because I like R-Truth. Um, so uh, Carmella pointed out Kofi Kingston is the WWE champion. And then Truth said that Carmella defeated Andre the Giant in her battle royal. So now she's the Andre the Giant champion. <laughs> Carmella tried to correct him. He didn't understand. Um, so again, I thought, like, I, I like our truth. I'm sorry. That's my, that's, that's, <laughs> I get fun out of that. So uh, they had Samoa Joe run out, though, attacked our truth. Um, Joe talked about beating up uh, Rey Mysterio. They had Braun Strowman run out. Uh, Joe uh, um, put the uh, clutch on Strowman, but Strowman was still able to power out. Um, it, it was one of these things where they had everybody do a run in on everybody else to to try to do something exciting. But at the end, you're just like, I don't care. Well, it's to let you know, dear, that next week we have the superstar shakeup. So uh, Braun Strowman can be on SmackDown. You anybody could be anywhere you never yeah. know 
Um, we had the Iconics beating. They brought out a team. They said this is a storied team, a team that deserves. Yeah, a title. the Brooklyn course, Bells. Brooklyn Bells. Of course, it was a bunch of nobodies. Beat them up. Uh, they had someone watching backstage. Or they had Paige watching backstage. She said, "I'm going to bring a real team to face them next week." So I wonder who that'll be. We'll see. I don't know. Nobody cared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they had Shane cut a promo. Talked about the Miz. Talked about Mr. Miz. Talked about. Uh, the announcer, the announcer didn't do the intro very well, so he beat up on the announcer. Um, nobody cared. They went to <laughs> Hardy Boys versus the Usos for the SmackDown titles. It was one of those that went for a few minutes, and then the Hardys hit all their big moves, and the Hardys won, and everybody was happy. Um, so and then Lars Sullivan came out in his terrible tights and beat him up. <laughs> yes, and Lars, and like Lars Sullivan, there's some weird, like he's just so lanky. And like, I, I don't know. He's got a strength. Like he looks like he's strong, but it's not strong like bodybuilder strong. It's strong like this is a guy that like shovels out septic tanks for a living. Strong. Like it's not a. It's not like a healthy strong. It's like yeah. a doesn't eat well, malnutrition, but still has a lot of muscle because he has a horrible life type strong. Yeah, I, I think for Lars and NXT, it worked because a lot of the guys in, in, yeah, in NXT are smaller build, so he looks bigger. But when he's on there with guys that are about his size, then he doesn't look as big, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we had uh, Becky Lynch out there. She said, you can call me the champ champ or Becky Two Belts. And so the crowd started chanting Becky Two Belts. So I guess that's your next T-shirt. Oh, they already made one. Oh, okay. Well, um, they showed uh, Becky. Very, uh, it's very uninspired, too. I'll look it up really quick while you okay. keep talking about um, this. They showed uh, Becky fighting Lacey Evans. Um, and again, nobody cared. And Lacey Evans jumped out and attacked Becky Lynch. Um, so, again, that's where your, uh, your feud's going to be going. And nobody cares because nobody cares about Lacey Evans because Lacey Evans doesn't do anything. Wait, you mean the the? God, this has been what about three months going now that she just comes out and walks back? You mean people don't care about that? Apparently not. Apparently not. Did you find the shirt? Good. Here you go. There's the link. Oh, I see. You sent it to me in Messenger. I thought you were going to pull it up on the screen. Oh uh, well, I'll I'll just let you do all that stuff. <laughs> oh. WWE is making me an offer here. Hold up. Let me show you something here. Um, application. What is it? I want to get one for $5. Don't miss out. Save $5 on your next order. Wow. Um, WWE, you don't know me. Uh, <laughs> WWE also sent me a uh, uh, survey the, the night, the day after WrestleMania. They're like, we want your thoughts on <laughs> WrestleMania. And I'm like, no, you don't. Uh, but I filled out their survey uh, very honestly and sent it back to them. But they they want me to, to not miss out on this. So here is Becky Two Belts. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Very wow, very inspired. Isn't that a cool shirt? But but look, this belt is got the red color, and this belt has the blue color to show that they're the two different belts. <sighs> the problem is those belts were uninspired to begin with. Yeah. I heard that they're going to be uh, changing up some of the belts, so like the I think the Raw tag titles, and then uh, they said expect the change with another like major title. I, I I just like I understand they wanted to because this belt came out because of the network. So when they did the network logo, they came out with this belt because that's the new WWE logo, and they wanted it to all like whatever. I get that, but then when they did a second belt and they use the same logo and then they did the women's belt and they use the same logo and then they yeah. did the SmackDown women's belt and it was the same logo. Just like, I like, I didn't like it in the first place. And now to see it on four different belts, it's yeah. like, I, I just, I, I don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Take note on the, the UK, the NXT UK championship and their, their tag titles, like do something like that. Make it actually look prestigious and not just plain with a big <sighs> logo slapped on it. Yeah. This is, this is, <clears throat> this is bad. All right. Yep. Okay. Oh, Delva says that Lacey Evans is the new Eva Marie. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair. That's that is entirely fair. So then we got the New Day, all three of the New Day versus the Bar and Drew McIntyre. 
Sami Zayn watched on the ramp. He came out and said the fans weren't worth his time, and he walked away. Um, oh, great. So they're going to make Sami Zayn the new Lacey Evans, except he just walks out, tells the people off, and leaves. Yeah, but at least he can cut a promo and seems Well, and at least he can have a match to back it up. Yeah, that too. Um, so, I mean, they got a match. And, and this is another one of those where I understand um, Big E had an injury. So he couldn't do a whole lot. He tore his meniscus in his knee, which is the same injury I had several years ago. Um, so, like, I get it. But at the same time, this was not a good main event. It was, again, one of those things they – this is one of those matches that you need to do leading up to the pay-per-view where you mix everybody together into the big match, you know. But instead they do this after the pay-per-view. They throw everybody show together. You Drew McIntyre can show up on SmackDown. He might get drafted to SmackDown. Superstar yeah. shake up. But nobody cares about McIntyre. They don't care if he gets drafted to SmackDown. Oh, I know. <laughs> so anyway, Kofi Kingston won, and his kids got in the ring, and Xavier Woods and Big E. And again, no hint of a breakup, no hint of yeah. uh, any sort of – which is fine. I'm good, yeah. happy with that. But again, it was just – it was just a SmackDown. It was nothing special. So the two shows, the only, like the only real big thing, you had Sami Zayn return, which I like because I like Sami Zayn, but he really didn't do a whole lot except he turned heel. But he'd been heel before, so it's like whatever. Um, and then you had the Undertaker make his uh, return with Elias, which was a fun segment, yeah. and it was really well done. And they took their time with it, and they allowed the they allowed the segment to breathe. They allowed the confrontation to work out. They didn't rush into anything, so that was great. But that was really the only inspired thing of the two nights. Yeah. Otherwise, there was absolutely nothing of note. For both and I them. I know that is because the shakeup is next week, and they want to kind of save all the exciting stuff for that, but. At the same time, too, we we're we've been conditioned at this point that the the raw after mania, a lot of big things happen, and a lot of big things have happened in the past, and very unpredictable things. And this was it. not that. This was yeah. not that. Yeah. So, so we, there, we didn't. We, I mean, Lars Sullivan was the only guy who moved up. Yeah, on both shows, so we didn't get an influx of talent. We didn't get. The, uh, you know, all those NXT people coming in. We didn't get any big surprises from the indies. We didn't get the big returns of any superstars other than The Undertaker for a promo bit, but no one doing matches. Um, we, we got the Hardys winning the belts, um, and that's supposed to be a thumb in the eye for AEW. Um, that's one of those, like, Vince thinks that's hilarious. He's like, well, they wanted the Hardys. We got the Hardys. We're going to give them the belts. And so, because all this news about the, the network that they're signing, whatever... So that was supposed to be a thing in their face. But again, it's like, uh, who cares? Um, uh, I'm like, again, I'm done with SmackDown. <laughs> like SmackDown was the better show of the Raw of the two shows. Yeah. But I mean, the superstar shake up at this point, like I don't care because I don't care about 90% of the talent on these shows. I don't care who they put on which show. It doesn't make any difference because just the fact that I get to see someone who's been on SmackDown for the last two years, take on somebody from Raw from the last year. I don't care because there's no interesting matchups left that they can do. There's nothing big. There's nothing exciting. There's no great returns. There's no great talent coming up. And, and they don't, well, I, the main problem is they don't build things in a way to make you care either. And, and I, anybody anybody who six months ago had any sort of momentum, like a Braun Strowman, um, he's now – nobody cares. Yeah. Like He's been in the joke matches. Kofi, great for Kofi uh, for being the champion. Congratulations. But now you know it's going to be the same list of guys that he's going to wrestle on every show for the next three or four months – because it's the exact same guys who have been on the top of all the shows for the last six months. There's no one new who's coming in to, to chase after him. There's no longstanding feud. Nobody returns. Nothing you know, surprising or exciting. I just I don't care. There's nothing going on I care about. So I'm, I'm done with WWE uh, weekly shows. Now, I will still watch the pay-per-views probably. I'm not going to watch them live. I'll watch them the day after or yeah. two days after. Yeah. Fast forward through a fair part of them. Yeah. Uh, maybe read a little bit online before I watch them. Like, oh, you got to check out this match. It's a good match. So I'll go back and I'll check out that match, which is more or less what I've been doing for the last two years anyway. But 
of the WWE product I don't care about, and I just I'm not going to watch it anymore. I, I remember uh, what was it? I think Friday night I messaged Dirt, and I was like, I was drunk too. I messaged him. I'm like, hey man, take over. Take over was great. Check it out. I get a response the next day. I hate wrestling. Yes, <laughs> that was exactly it. And and I haven't I haven't watched the show. I haven't gone back and watched it. And I've heard exactly. that. It's really, really, really good. Top I've heard to bottom, other, top to bottom, it is an excellent show. I've heard other people say that, but I just, I, I, I cannot. I just, I don't want to. So, where does that leave the future of the transitional champion podcaster? So, after the WWE pay per views, at some point the week after, and we're we're pretty fast and loose with our schedule on the show. I had to get my van worked on yesterday. You've had to work overtime in the past. I've been sick. You've I've, been sick. I've fallen asleep. And yeah. So, so the plan is at some point the week after a WWE pay-per-view, we will come on and do a show. And we'll talk about what's been going on the last month in professional wrestling. And we'll talk about what's been happening with some of the stars. We'll talk about the WWE product. We'll talk a little bit about Major League Wrestling. We'll talk a little bit about uh, ROH. Uh, they just signed this new big deal with New Japan. They had a big show. Um, you know, over the WrestleMania weekend, we can talk about some of that stuff. We can talk about AEW and what's new with them and going on. It's going to be more about the wrestling business, maybe some of the fun stories that have come out. Maybe um, if, if anything of note happens at one of the indie shows I'm at or something, we can talk about that. If you go to a live event, you can talk about that. It's going to be a general wrestling show, less WWE specific, more of a general show, but it'll be like once a month. At some point the week after the pay-per-view, we'll make a we'll make the event page for it. We'll set the schedule so you guys can come up and check it out. If you if you want to leave us notes, if you got topics you think that we should talk about, you can always email me dirt at popculturenetwork.com or dirt at thepopc.net. Um, and we'll we'll set them aside. And when it's time for the show, we'll bring them up and talk about those things. Um, but as far as the weekly show, as yeah. far as watching Raw and SmackDown, no. that's over. That's yeah. done. No, I, like, I <laughs> We tried the experiment. It does yeah, not work. We're I was not. telling Emily, I was like, I'm so glad that we're not going to be doing this every week anymore. Because it, it, it is like, even when I'm watching condensed versions of this, I'm still just like, either nothing's happening or I'm like, why are they doing this? There's never like a, oh, hey, that seems promising. Like with the Kofi win, like you were talking, it's like, cool, great. Awesome moment to have on the show. Where do you go from here? Right. Are they going like, to squander it? Probably. Just, it's it's not like you're gonna have the rock return and do a feud with Kofi because that would be awesome. Yeah, like <laughs> that would sell it, you know what I mean? Right. That would cement it in a way, but that's not gonna happen. It's not like it's not like WWE is gonna sign Eli Drake um from now that he's been released and bring him on and shoot him as like the next big thing and have him go up against Kofi. That'd at least be interesting to see how they would work that out. They're not gonna do something like that, you know? So it's like my interest, they're all they're doing is continuing to roll the show along. Mm -hmm. um, now, the one hope that I have for the future, um, and, and I want to say, you know, Delvis, thanks for being in the chat today. He says, I appreciate the links um, to all these shows. Um, he goes, I don't have cable right now, so this is the way he keeps up on wrestling is by watching the show. And I'm glad you watched uh, this and and I hope you continue to watch as we go through in the future, even though we're not doing it weekly. But uh, I, you know, it's just I I don't WWE. The the one hope for the future is that when they move to Fox, because it's on a real full network, and because Fox has certain expectations, they are supposedly going to retool the in, entire show to make it more of a sporting event type show than a sports entertainment type show because they want it to fit with Fox does NFL, Fox does Major League Baseball. They want it to fit within the realm of those other events as opposed to being a wrestling show that piggybacks off of Raw. Yeah. So because of that, there is a hope that they might have a compelling show come October, but October is still a long ways away and they've got plenty of months to screw everything up and rethink everything between now and then and come out with a show that is exactly like everything else. 
but I I'm so deflated after this WrestleMania. I was so deflated when I saw the entryway. I was so deflated by the time we got to the main show. I was so deflated by the time we got halfway through the show. By the time we got to the end of the show, I I was just done. Like I don't yeah. Watching the Raw and SmackDown this week, like I didn't even care. Yeah. It's like I, I put them on and I started vacuuming. I was fast forwarding through stuff. I didn't I didn't care. I like it's it's whatever. So we will somewhere deep within me. I'm still a wrestling fan. I love going to local indie shows. I love watching some of the other shows like major league wrestling and ROH and some of that stuff. But as far as WWE, I'm, I am not a WWE fan at the moment. Right. Um, and so that's, that's where we, we I was thinking too, maybe we can find a way every now and again uh, to work it in. Maybe we just start you and I watching old episodes of thunder. (laughs) (laughs) maybe maybe we'll just do like a live watching of here's the here's the thunder from february 17th 99 or 2000 or whatever maybe well you know the one thing that's disappointed me a lot of times on the network is that i've I've tried to go back and watch old shows and there will be missing episodes yeah um like especially i I was real excited they put a lot of awa stuff on there and they put stuff from like uh, georgia south and i wanted to go back and watch some of that stuff and i went back to try to watch that and they would do like a couple shows from february a show in april a couple shows in june and you're like ah like i wanted to watch week by week progression through some of these things that they didn't do so 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 hopefully some of that stuff they've gone back and they've they filled in the gaps so maybe we can find a spot go through the network, find a spot where there, maybe there's two months where it's complete and solid. And so we'll watch, um, you know, some of those episodes, we'll do like a live stream or something while we watch those episodes. And, and um, like, like the way you do with the, the fans of power, when you do a commentary yeah. or beyond yeah. retro, when you do a commentary, maybe we can yeah. do something and we can watch some of those as time goes on by. But, but as far as like five hours of Raw and SmackDown, no, no. Uh, 90 minute versions on Hulu of Raw and SmackDown. No, I'm not even invested in that. Uh, the 10 minute recap videos that you watch on YouTube, uh, fast forward through those maybe. Um, but yeah, n- nothing like that. Um, one last question here from the chat, Delvis. What are your thoughts on the Enzo invasion of ROH? Mm. Yeah, so Enzo and Big Cass, who's now, I think he's calling himself Cass XL. Is the name he's yeah, using. Yeah, something like that. And then uh, uh, Enzo is actually an N and a Z-O. Yeah. Um, it, look, Enzo's a good promo. Uh, that whole shtick that they had in WWE, to me, it worked because that follows like that New Age Outlaws mentality. People know what to expect. It's easy. It's, it's something they can get behind, and they did for a while. They made the mistake of splitting them up. It all kind of went downhill from there. Uh, we all know the Enzo's kind of like a garbage human being. Uh, <laughs> mild, and, to put yeah, it mild. Yeah, everyone has, has said that. Uh, Cass has had some issues after since he's oh, been okay, released. So wait, he's, asking, he's asking, was it a shoot? No, it was no, it was, it was total work. It was 100% work. Of work. Yeah. yeah. Um, it depends because they were neither one of them were ever particularly great in the ring. So to have them in the WWE style protected them a lot, I would say. To see them here on the independence, especially a Ring of Honor, uh, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of those fatal flaws. I would imagine they would either have to keep the matches short or make them mostly like a promo thing, and it's. That's yeah, like really, it. really the only thing you can do is have them be the guys who cut the promo and do squash matches. Yeah. Um, and that's really about all they're they're they are the wrestling in sport or they are the entertainment in sports entertainment. They are not yeah. the wrestling, they are not the sport in sports entertainment. Yeah. Um, so you know, I and like what you said with with Enzo being a garbage human being, like I agree with that. Um, and and I agree that people can change i know that there are people that have done horrible things in the past and they've been oh, able yeah. to learn from them and grow and move on and become better people enzo is not that guy no i don't think so either en- enzo is he he did it but it was their fault uh you know he did it but they were asking for it uh, yeah you know, he's in so- his own he's in his own little headspace where he thinks he's a great rapper 
And, oh uh, yeah, I forgot about those. He did those. Yeah, tra- those yeah, uh, yeah. No one showed up to those shows. No one bought his album. Oh, oh. Randy so, Savage was a better rapper. Uh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. About I, that. I actually, I have a soft spot in my heart for that "Be a Man" track that Savage put out. <laughs> Uh, so, um, why is it security are always guys my size? They're just doormen at that point. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. It's like the actual security. If you'll know if it's actual security, uh, coming in to get them because the actual security are usually guys between like 30 and 50 who don't look like they work out, but they look like guys who will get into a bar room fight. Those are your real security guys when it's scrawny guys or it's guys, um, that are way too muscular that are wearing a shirt. That's like way too tight. Um, then you know that those are guys who are planted there because it's skinny guys to get hit or it's guys who look way too big because they're indie guys who happen to be at the show wanted to get, you know, a tryout or something. And they threw a security shirt on them and let them get in the ring. But when it's a guy who looks like he's 50, you know, looks like he drinks a case of beer a night. Um, and he's the guy running in there and he goes for like, the legs, you know, first thing to take him down to then crawl onto his back and drag him out of there, as opposed to, you know, a guy who gets in his face and gets punched. I mean, that's your real security or those guys. Um, so, yeah, you can tell by security a lot of times whether or not it's uh, a shoot or if it's legit. Um, and of course, 99% of them um, there are, are works that 99% of them, when you have a guy who jumps in the ring, it's a work. But like we saw the Hall of Fame, some of them are legit and they look completely different. The ones that are shoots um, look completely different than the ones that are works. You can definitely tell by the way the camera work goes. When it's when it's something that they want to work, the, the camera will show it. And that's a good clue. Um, when, when a wrestler gets hurt and the referee puts up the X, if they're showing that on camera, the referee putting up the X, 99% of the time, that's a shoot occasionally it'll be a work but there's other stuff that gives it away when it's a work other than him putting up the 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 sign but it does happen from time to time especially in wwe because they like to blur that line because they're edgy all right that's going to do it for the show guys thanks for watching again um we'll be back at some point after whatever the next pay-per-view is i don't even want to know what the next pay-per-view is i don't want to know when it is we'll burn that bridge when we come to it (laughs) Um, I was just well, gonna spoil. I was just gonna spoil it for you. No, don't don't say a thing. Don't say a thing. We'll worry about okay. it later. All right. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll be back at some point in the future. And um, um, thanks everyone that that joined us on this long, long journey. Oh, this was this was a mistake. I mean, this was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on the show. You mean it was a mistake? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Pants off, dance off. Beefcake's in the Hall of Fame, and I don't care if he's got that ring. He still sucks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging in the chat. We'll talk to you later.